Hi, welcome to this uh, online tutorial. Um, I'm going to demonstrate in this um, how I convey a particular mood. Um, this is going to be from imagination and uh, so it's um, not only is the, the subject matter that really appeals to me but the fact that it's an opportunity to um, to create, to invent, rather than be slavishly copying um, a, a, a photo, which I love painting from photos um, from time to time, um, but um, sometimes the painting from a photo, as I've covered many times actually um, in previous um, videos and lessons, uh, yeah, pa painting from photos can be great fun um, and I do tend to sort of like to forgive me a second while I'm, I'm sort of thinking this one out uh, photos do tend to be uh, a bit restricting in terms of uh, creativity because of course you know you're sticking to a sort of remit and um, when I do work from photos, I try to change them as much as possible. I try to, uh, um, or change them at least for, to benefit, to make for a better painting, I should say. Thinking of having a, a staircase, I think I always think when I'm making these things up that uh, they probably, somewhere on this planet, this scene exists. So... And maybe it does, you know, over the years, um, we've probably traveled and visited many places, some that we'd have forgotten about. My idea here is really, um, as you can see, I hope, <laughs> a building here. So indigo, burnt sienna, light red. And we'll put the indigo up here next to my viridian green. And let's get something going. So I'm just going to go in with a large mop brush to start off with. And I'm going to put in some lovely warm background up here. So there's a little bit of, I mean, a really small amount of ultramarine blue, but mostly light red for that, for that wash. Um, probably going to be using a few different um, techniques here. Let's get, I think of it's almost a sort of woodland uh, in autumn. neutral. Yeah. I want to create a, a neutral colour painting. So not too much in the way of bright colours on this occasion. If I go to yellow anywhere then I'll be quick to put in a sort of bluey red purpley colour to knock that yellow back as I'm doing here and you know there is certainly an argument for um, just saying well why not just pick up a tube of neutral tint or something like this well of course you can um, but as I say often these exercises for me are um, sort of educational for me I, I, I had spent quite a bit of time studying and learning colour theory and I think sometimes if you paint um, too much uh, in neutrals there's a danger that you'll forget that stuff that you've learnt. So here comes my um, indigo, sorry, and perhaps our indigo can go 
up here. So even with neutrals, you've always got to remember that there should be some subtlety in terms of colour. Um, it's not going to make for a great painting if, if you were just to use, say, pick up sepia or pick up uh, Payne's grey or lamp black or something like that. Um, though <laughs> even that, you know, um, has some benefits. Uh, just, just if you're if you're really needing to get to grips with your tonal values, which of course at some point you have to, um, because tonal values are the most uh, important um, elements, I think. So. Um, then, then certainly um, you've got to consider you've got to consider that um, that that would be a, a particularly useful ex uh, um, experience, learning experience. But uh, I, I like to s sort of uh, when I'm actually painting to produce a finished painting, I like to sort of um, tread between, if you like, w uh, and that's to. Um, have a bit of just a hint of colour in places in some of my paintings. So now then, this would be a classic place to change the colour if we're if we're talking about using subtle colour. So if I were to warm things up a bit, just for the moment, pick up light red. I've got these idea of these steps dotted through this foreground. If I keep everything swimming with lots of paint, lots of water, then I've, I sort of buy myself some time. Just using the point of the brush, as I occasionally do that from time to time. And to use the point of the brush usually when I'm nearing completion of a painting. So let's have a little bit more of that indigo. And perhaps that indigo can um, encompass, cradle, if you like, our focal point. So I'm using this darker tone in here, in this sort of U-shape, to, to, to cradle the focus, focus point, or focal point, sorry. So. so more of the same color. And indigo always looks incredibly dark, of course, when it first goes on. But um, more often than not, it dries out to something much, much lighter. Just something in front of the house there's a danger of me painting around the house and afraid to go being too afraid to go in front of it here with shapes okay just put the brush down for a moment because I've got a lot of paint on the go here and that's often a good time to consider um, other techniques, other tools. This is a scraping brush. Uh, sorry, this is what am I talking about? This is a palette knife. Let's see if we can scrape a couple of these steps out of the dark edge here. Yeah. So, uh, where 
is, I've lost a brush, there it is. I'm going to do a little trick here of um, creating, deliberately creating a cauliflower or run back. I'm not sure what you call them in your neck of the woods. I call them, usually call them cauliflowers, things that we, our, our earlier years, I think years ago, used to be frowned upon cauliflowers. Uh, but thankfully, we, um, things have moved on in watercolour and uh, if you can sort of harness, embrace those effects. So all I've done here is while the paint was still um, still very wet, there's a lot of paint in the first place, I dropped a bit of water in, just clean water, that does its own thing. Um, in fact, just doing that sometimes is, is sufficient. Um, but then it, uh, what you saw me do is add a little bit of lemon yellow into uh, those little dots of water. And it gives, can give a fantastic effect. Um, just, just dotting those with, with fresh paint. So there's always a danger of that type of thing get, getting a bit twee. Um, you know, it's um, e each to their own sort of thing on, in that respect. But if I didn't, I feel as though if I didn't try these things out, I could be missing a trick. Um, often the things that you may think look a little contrived can work elsewhere and not look so qu quite quite so, so contrived um okay uh what about then i'll just take some paint off directly off my palette with the with the palette knife and create some lines through here uh perhaps this in front of this property there's some sort of fence So these paintings can quite often, people often ask me sometimes when I'm, just, when I'm uh, exhibiting if my paintings are um, mixed media or um, pen and wash. Uh, sometimes they are pen and wash, sometimes they are mixed media. But often the, the people will ask this about my watercolours and um, it, 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 they're not, they're not always, it's not always the case. It, it's more likely that they, they're looking at something like one of these paintings that I do, where I just like using, you know, using device, uh, these sort of devices, these tools, these things that um, help do something different. And, um, yeah. So, I want to see what it, does if I just put a lot of water around there now it does diffuse those things that I did a moment ago it's funny I, I, I get these um, I, I, I get a a need from time to time to just do an entire painting by where I'm going to uh, experiment and you, uh, and knowing that I might sacrifice, you know, it might end up in a, a bad result, that something I just didn't look great at the end. But I know that I will have learnt a lot from that session. So um, it's a case of, I think, you know, doing something, being mindful to remember what it was that, when it worked, when... Uh, something you did differently um, changed it to a point where you really liked it or you didn't like it at all, it, 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 where you lost it. Um, these things are really important, I think. These sessions are really important because if we sit down thinking that every time we're under that pressure to produce a masterpiece, I think the very opposite often happens. It's, um, it, it, it becomes... Um, uh, you, you're, you're, you're not learning anything. Let's 
So let's just get across here with some further information. Now I think I need, in my head I sort of, I want this path to diminish a bit as we go up the hill here towards the property. So, so now that things are happening up here, I think we've got to turn our attention to other areas of the painting just for a moment. Let's just deliver some paint down here for a moment. Uh, yeah, going back to that thing about deliberately creating cauliflowers, um, I was a big fan, I, I, I remain a big fan of the late John Blockley, um, a British artist and um, and I just I just always remember thinking, wow, this 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 guy's doing something very different, and uh, with watercolor. And if you if you get a chance, check him out. Um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's personal taste, of course. Um, but e even if you don't like his work, his style, I, th I think it's difficult to avoid the fact that he pushed things. <laughs> Let me just put a bit of extra information in these places here. Just inferred detail, most of it. And of course, his daughter is also a fantastic artist, Anne Blockley. So, just going in here. Just getting my colours a bit brighter as we move towards the foreground. And again, it's funny how the, the, the more you do, the more real the, 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 this place becomes. What starts off as just, well, let, you know, a, a sort of let's see what happens if we do this and if we do that, um, quite soon becomes, you know, this, is, this, this place exists. It really is somewhere. Um, because particularly when I think of these shapes, um, I think of the new forest area in, in, in um, southern England, places like that. These sort of gorse, where there's a lot of gorse bushes, um, which seem to be in flower almost 12 months a year. Um, so... When I get to to my painting out of doors, when I get out of doors to paint, um, uh, these paintings help enormously. Uh, they help me see what I'm looking at in a in a painterly fashion. In a, otherwise, a bit like working from photos. I, I love painting out of doors, but there there are. Um, traps again that um, you get too involved with um, the, the 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 minutiae you know the the tiny detail that surrounds you and the the enormous amount of information that you'll see when you're out of doors painting you, you've got to you, you've got to rein that in a bit um, and by painting like this you can do things that you know are going to um, help you do that. An imagination, painting by imagination is just like painting anything. It's in any, from any sort of source uh, of inspiration. It, it, um, it develops with you. The more you do, the, the easier it seems to become. Um, I, I, I'm, I know that I wouldn't have been able to do this when I started out. Um, I, I'd 
struggle just to make something look like look representational. I'd struggle to struggle to make a tree look like a tree. Um, I would struggle to make anything look convincing. But with perseverance and and regular um, regular exercises, you do develop all these things. So if I think anything is too busy, I'll just hit it with a bit of water and let it do its own thing there. So I'm leaving the building to last because I, I I'm okay with, with with sort of buildings. You know, it's it's all the stuff that um, the more complex stuff like this that I want to make sure I've 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 got right before I go investing. You know, um, I've got to get this right before I can get before I do that. That's the way I feel. Okay. I think I'll speed dry this as I've covered more or less everywhere I want to go so far. Yeah, I'll speed dry this and then we'll look at our next move. Or can I? There's a couple of areas here that are just going off damp, towards damp. And I think we could get a, a fence post or two in here. One much closer to us down, down here. So a big jump like that in um, scale. Put some perspective in our painting. Well, that's a reminder to tell me that my camera will run out, so I need to stop and restart. So let's speed dry this. Okay, that is now almost completely dry. So I'm just going to start thinking about the building. Um, let's just move my other brushes out of the way here. And I'm going to mix up something semi-dark, so a bit of cerulean blue and a bit of a uh, bit of light red, cerulean blue and light red gives me a beautiful mid-tone neutral and a doorway about here somewhere. few windows up here and the roof line of course and we'll probably darken one or two of those bits of detail when we're ready I'm sort of outlining things carefully. Try, I wouldn't outline necessarily the furthest most outer edges of the building. It's best if you're going to outline anything to have the outlines in, t in the interior lines. So interior verticals, not too many on the verticals. Mostly interior horizontals like the bottom of the roof here. Um, it's okay to do the occasional top uh, line like that um, but what you've got to remember is um, how much light uh, um, these hard surfaces are exposed to 
so you the vertical corners like that get exposed to a lot of light so you want to be careful not to put too much um uh too much inference on vertical lines like that at the edges uh now i'm going to mix up a similar color but changing the two colors instead of using cerulean blue i've swapped the cerulean blue for ultramarine blue and i've swapped the raw sienna for burnt sienna oh, sorry i swapped the light red for burnt sienna and this will give me a, a darker mix just at the top of one or two of those doors and windows i'll put that darker mix in which just gives a little bit of depth and volume to those small shapes up there um, and then i will add anything i think of interest that I think might work um, in this area because this is focal point territory so it can be quite within reason you can be quite um, you know uh, uh, quite bold so afford to be quite emphatic with some of these things a couple of posts in this fence slightly heavier posts in that fence up there um, a few of these lines across the path again one or two of these heavier lines on the path sorry on the the steps down here I tend to sort of warm up my sticky dark mix as i move into the foreground these are just the, I'm just hinting upon the horizontals of the steps themselves in places. Okay, and I'm going to pick up the rigger brush, but use the same mix, which again was ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And if I want to go want to go back to a slightly lighter mix, still quite a dark mix, but a lighter mix, then I'll use the cerulean blue with light red. So lines like this can really help so, you know, sort of integrate the the design sort of popping through your foreground like this, just weaving their way through the foreground, maybe at the edge of the path, something like this, edge of the steps, lines that um, tell your viewer, sh guide your viewer up here to the focal point. Okay, not too many of them, just one little one there perhaps at the bottom should be sufficient um, break up the roof a little bit with something okay have a little bit of warm and cool in that in that one part of the building there a little bit of blue a little bit of light red very wet and watery just let this rigger brush dance around a bit warm it up a little bit more yeah. texture I mean that's 
probably what I'm thinking about more than anything else is texture. Even though I'm using paint in these sort of like mini washes, um, really what I'm thinking about right this moment is just subtle, some softer textures using colour and, and brushwork. Okay, I'm going to dry this again because I just want to bring this painting to a finish now. Um, I think we could probably warm up this roof before I do. So. I think that was a bit wishful thinking. So just take that straight back off. There's no need to panic. Okay, that's better. And sometimes in certain surfaces, like buildings, boats, things like that, hard surfaces that get a lot of light. Um, once I put my color on, once I put my choice of color into the area, I just take a little bit of white gouache while it's still wet. Must. You must do this while it's still wet. I'll put a drier white um, bit of gouache on towards the end of the painting, but um, just want to do that while things are still soft. So what I'm doing there is really the weakest of weak paint. I'm just taking out whiter areas that I don't think are working. The, 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 the bright whiteness down here is distracting us from, from this area here. So, picks up some ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, tiny bit of um, burnt sienna, and we'll shadow off I always like to put a hint of warm now and again in my in my shadows. And then um, shadow under here. And this. And I've got to do the brave thing here and put a proper shadow in. So will suggest that there's some shadow being cast. It just needs warming up a bit more, I think. Some shadow over here on this building. And imagine a tree over here that's throwing some shadow across our house. I think I'm going to be even more brave. Right, I think what this calls for is a flat brush, some shadow across the mid-ground. As it tumbles across the path there. A little bit of warmth. Then across the foreground, 
And I try to make sure that the when you're inferring these shadows like this, they follow the movement of the ground. They follow the shape of the of the ground that they're falling on, of course. Something throwing a bit of shadow over here. bit in there in the recesses. Now I can really, I think I really need to sort of go to town on these few windows that we can see. So ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and as dark as I can make it. So dark in that window there, dark in that window there dark in the doorway, something darker at the edge of the roof, something darker in front just about here and again we'll just make sure that we've got a, a bit of line work running through the story, through the the image, the scene. dry it off. I think we'll put a little bit of white gouache in here. So I'll take my gouache straight from the tube. There's a lot of water in this brush before I push it down into the tube of my paint and I'll just spatter in some atmosphere, some summery airborne particle. Just mix a bit of that white up on the edge of my masking tape there. Make sure it gets into the fibres of the brush. Okay, so I'm just going to put the mount around it for a moment. See what it looks like. I think there's balance there. Just maybe a washing line up there, you know, just catches the light in places. Just in the window, a bit of light. Across the top of the fence, there's a bit of light. I think we'll leave it like that. So it was completely from imagination. Um, it's just, uh, it's both a, 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 an opportunity to exercise I ideas, uh, which I think is an absolutely essential part of our uh, learning process. And um, to try and remember that most of the time we're learning when we paint, we're not aiming to produce the masterpiece. Um, often I find, you know, when you're learning, you end up with your personal best. But I think if you put the pressure on yourself to, every time you pick up a brush, that you're under some sort of pressure to produce a masterpiece, um, or even, you know, just thinking it's got to be a finished painting, it's, you know, this one's going to go in the frame, then um, that's where things get a little bit sticky. 
if you can paint as often as possible and um, have the attitude that everything you do, everything you paint is a practice session, then I promise you, your work will improve rap more rapidly than, um, than the former idea of, um, of putting that sort of pressure on yourself to produce something good every time you paint. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Do remember to subscribe to my channel. It really helps. I can keep these uh, tutorials coming. And um, I hope to see you have your company at the next one.